I'm Spencer King here at uh, Euro PCR. We're having the pleasure to meet today with Horst Sievert from Germany, uh, Impico Intesi from uh, South Africa, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, renal denervation. Horst, first of all, do you believe in this concept of neurohumoral inter uh, inter interventions? Uh, does it have a place for us? Well, uh I mean, renal denervation did not come out of the blue. There had been lots of animal data before we went into humans. So I'm pretty sure that the concept uh, is working. And the problem we have is that we have to identify the right patients. And in order to bring it to the community, to bring it back to the community, we need uh, positive results of the sham control trials, which are ongoing. So there may be something to it. Uh, it shouldn't throw it out with the bathwater we, yet. We are absolutely sure, all of us, who have done this have seen individual patients who are really great uh, responders, so there's no doubt. But we also have seen many patients who do not respond at all, so and we just have to figure out who is the right patient for this. In Pico, the uh, problem of hypertension is uh, vast. South Africa, you really got a major problem. If this can work, what's, what's the opportunity for uh, having an impact on the population? If it can work, opportunity is great. We know that hypertension is one of, particularly in our context, the single biggest contributor to cardiovascular related morbidity, mortality, whether it's myocardial infarction, stroke, renal failure, it's a huge contributor to cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So that is undeniable. We also know that there's a large, huge, I mean, a large need for interventions at work. There's a big armamentarium of pharmacotherapy and despite that, there's limited efficacy in terms of uh, getting therapeutic benefit. So it's very clear that there's a need. And if it can be uh, based on the animal work horses just spoken about, that there's a proven intervention that can have significant change in the magnitude of blood pressure in individuals that we can't get control of, then you know, it must be pursued and uh, there will be a place for it. So Horace, one of the criticisms of uh, the technique so far has been the variability of how it's done. It, it, it occurs to me that there seem to be a lot of different approaches to this. Uh, where are we in the application of endovascular renal denervation? Well, there are, there are multiple reasons why the trial failed. And as you said, one of the reasons is a technical aspect. That is how the procedure was performed, but also how the device is designed. And there are basically two different concepts now to, to, uh, to find an answer to that. One is uh, to go more distally in the renal arteries because histology findings have shown that in the distal branches of the renal artery the nerves are more close to the endothelium. And the second technique is, uh, the second approach is to develop techniques which are uh, targeting the proximal part of the renal artery but with, uh, which have a, a larger penetration depth. So uh, the spiral catheter from Medtronic is going to the distal branches and techniques like uh, ultrasound or chemical ablation, they are targeting the proximal parts, but they have a larger penetration depth. And Pico, if we're going to move on with this, what do you see in terms of uh, the evidence that we'll need and what kind of trials, uh, wh where, sh where should this go? Right. Okay. So. Um, there's been a lot of debate about the whole issue of sham control trials. Um, I, I think they will be important because the issue of placebo in the treatment of hypertension is important. So I think the sham control trials will be important. Uh, the other very important issue for me is going to be that we will need a device that allows feedback. One of the big handicaps for me in all, this, in all the studies and having done the procedure is you can sit there, whether it's 20 minutes, half an hour, think you've achieved a result and there's absolutely no measure of outcome. When I leave the patient, I have no clue that I've actually had an effect. So um, that for me is, 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 is in terms of development of new technology, finding a way of getting almost instantaneous feedback and allowing me to know that I've done something effective is going to be hugely important so to the way forward. So where are we in finding a, a feedback? We put up a stent, we know how big it is, we can see it, but where are we in getting some kind of documentation that uh, we actually perform the procedure? Some, some early technologies uh, in development to measure the activity which is uh, going from the kidney to the brain. 
but uh, I must say all of this is in an early stage. So I think it's an important <coughs> aspect to have that feedback, but uh, more important is that we can show that the technology of renewable innovation works at all, and then the feedback is a um, nice add-on, but we first have to demonstrate that it is working, and not only that it is working, that it is working sufficiently. That means, and that brings up the question, how much blood pressure reduction do we have to achieve that uh, the community accept this as, an, as a treatment option for hypertension, and that is under debate. So where were we today and where are we going to go in terms of uh, moving this field forward or killing it off, depending on which way you need to go? Where, where are we? Right. Well, we, I think we know where we are, and uh, my view re is that, in, to some degree, hypertension 3 was a blessing in disguise and that the field had moved forward way too rapidly before we completely understood the physiology, the renal anatomy, the sympathetic innervation, peripheral versus proximal, depth of the, the sympathetic uh, uh, innervation, and that this has given us an opportunity to pause and really go back to the basics, the animal work, the understanding the anatomy, and involving our engineers and everybody else that's involved to, to, to finding solutions to the problem. Horace, let me give you the last word in terms of where we should go. It will all depend upon the results of the ongoing trials and we will uh, look at the results end of this year or early next year and then we go from there. Well, thanks to both of you for bringing us up to date where we are with renal uh, denervation. Clearly a situation that needs therapy. Hypertension being our major cause of cardiovascular disease throughout the world and the compliance with current therapies being far suboptimal. Uh, we're all hoping that uh, we, can, we can fix it in a more definitive way. Thanks for visiting with us. Thank you. Thanks.